Welcome back to the channel. This video will talk about Victron components, whatever we use, whatever you use, whatever I use, and working with Node-RED. And this video, the first out of a series of videos, is about the basics and the requirements that we can start with configuring, whatever we want to see, the dashboard, how it should look like, or maybe any automation. And we will be using, correct, this Multiplus, as well as one of the sources and one of the triggers and one of the remote actions we will use here as well. And this video should just enable you to get started. And so this would be the start where you should start. Regardless, I was asked a couple times in the last couple weeks, month, who knows. Um, I'm actually German, so I don't know. I really don't know if you noticed this, but I have a slightly tiny accent, maybe. I highly doubt that you noticed this anyways, but very important. Yep, I got a shirt from, I guess what, to my birthday. I got a shirt from uh, back home, from Germany. My own shirt. Well, not my own one, but from the Black Forest. Anyways, that's where I'm from. So regardless, you don't even want to know where I'm from, I guess, but living in the USA, in Los Angeles, that's where I'm making all the videos. That's where also I try to get the products from and incorporate products in here. And what's pretty cool, Victron, is it an American company? No, it's not. I think it's a Dutch or Netherlands. Sorry, oh, I should not say that. I think the company is from Netherlands. So, without anything else, let's start with the requirements. So, the first thing you will need, regardless of anything else, you have to have Node-RED. And Node-RED is only in the large image. So that means, if you have Raspberry Pi, like I have, regardless of Raspberry Pi 3 or 4, in my case, I will have it on my Raspberry Pi 4, just for reference. I have the large image, and that's what you will need. You ha will need the large image, and we'll start here. So here you see my little tiny dashboard. I have connected the Multiplus. Mm -hmm. I have connected a smart chant, also from Victron. Mm -hmm. Well, and I have connected the Dupa. Well, actually, it's not the duper, but it is the product from them. This product, isolated four port USB to TTL UART, FTDI. And that's basically, I have one USB-C connection over, oh, you can see it here, but this one, USB-C connection, and that goes right into my Raspberry Pi. And then I have four, four connections. I can plug in Smart Chant, I can plug in MPPT, I, uh, Solar Charger from Victron, I can plug in what else do they have in the meantime? Probably also the new DC to DC charger, Orion XS. So those kind of things. And everything needs to be connected with the Raspberry Pi. Very important. So that brings me again to this dashboard. So I have a couple components connected from Victron over here. And it's important that you know that. And that's also a requirement because Everything that's connected, you will be able or should be able when it's correct, when it's connected properly, you should be able to pull information out or trigger some actions with Node-RED. That means let's check on the version first. I'll go to menu as always. I'll go, well, really quick. I have one wire temperature connected. I have the Multiplus connected. I, yeah, I should not click on it. I have my Raspberry Pi processor temperature connected, well actually not connected, but through the setup helper installed. And I have a smart chunt here as well. Anything else? Nope, that's it. And as you can see, maybe here in this corner, I also have the GPS connected. As well as relays I have connected, which you didn't see here because I just clicked away. I think the connection is a little lagging here, but I think you hear it. So we have a relay connected as well. We can trigger them as well. Good, let's check the version. Menu, settings, firmware. I do have version 3.30. To be specific, the official release, large image. And there shouldn't be a new one. Yep, no new version available. So first thing we need to do, enable Node-RED. That means we'll go into settings, go down almost all the way, I believe. It's right above the setup helper, the package manager, in case you have it installed. Minus S large features. And as you can see, I do have already Node-RED enabled, and that is quite important. 
you might have it disabled you want to enable it very important and you can write it down or you can follow what I'm doing so that's the IP address plus the port at the end 1881 so in my case I'm using my IP address instead of venus.local and the port 1881 and that brings us to this page I'm cheating here a little bit because I had already configured everything I didn't want to delete everything again and start over when you plug in your IP address and the port you will get back here in this overview and you will also have this welcome screen and everything else so you can start clicking through that if you want to it, there's some useful information read it if you want to when you're done with it um, you will see kind of this layout that's pretty much all it is and in my case I have two tabs because tab one is already what I have configured and I wanted to have a blank tab so we can start working today in the first attempt uh, together the first important step was activating node red that's pretty much all and I want to show you one thing what you will need as well I want to give you the URL already in case you have configured things and you want to play around um, regardless of what are you doing here but those were the first steps that's pretty much it now we can use node red and that is already and that is amazing there are tons of tutorials out there by the way I'm just doing what I've learned and discovered myself so there might be other ways better ways worse who knows whatever ways I so I'm always willing to learn if I'm doing something wrong but uh, what I'm showing usually worked for me so I hope um, there's always another way so keep that in mind um, other people might do it differently that's what I'm doing that being said now we will continue just pulling over some injects over here so those nodes on the left side when you hover over it you can see already a short brief message about it and information what it is uh, this timestamp is just this is system generated timestamp when you click it in this case click then we need to take the debug because that's something you might need in the future and those two individual nodes you can always connect them so you can see it's like a Microsoft Visio if you have worked with that so you connect those nodes together and next thing will be you have to deploy it always before you wanna before you test something you have to deploy it so I'm hitting deploy confirm deploy in my case yes and then I can see up here successful successfully deployed what I need now here on this right side you can see you can switch bef between info there's so much other stuff help um, and of course there are there's ton when you click on it tons of information about the notes so you can read it I have not even read everything yet uh, and but here's also the debug message that's what I want to refer to and show you because now we have those two notes they do nothing at the moment unless you trigger it in this case here you can hit this timestamp now it's triggered and you see the debug is spitting out some um, numbers or timestamp in this case this is a timestamp how to read it um, you might know that better in any case I want to double click here on timestamp really quick we can change it for example to a string which we say every time I trigger it I want to see this hello Toby so that means uh, done I have to deploy again always and now I can just inject that's what I notice inject the string and I can see that's the debug and if you would not use the debug if you would for example use a node which is your what well, you don't see it multi plus which is over here at the moment you might be able to trigger on off because you have multiple buttons configured or switches configured or whatever that's basically the base where we're starting at so now we have this I think even when you double click on it you could say when you look at this here's the message you can say hey when I repeat it oh now it's a little bit outside of uh, what I'm recording so there's none interval interval between times and at a specific time let's do the interval and wh I want to have it every five seconds you should see there done deploy again deploy it and now we should see every five seconds that there's a hello Toby there's one I, did, I, did, I seriously I'm not clicking look at my hands on oh, on the screen there it is so now we have this continuously but uh, honestly I don't want to have that because that's just too much so deploy 
confirm. Let's really quick just clear everything in here in debug. Oop, so it's empty. One other thing I want to show you, and that is similar. We'll keep the debug, we'll keep the hell Toby. But you can scroll down here, there's plenty of other stuff. And by the way, you can import other no I think I don't know if they call it nodes, but you can import other pre-configured nodes. I think I'm saying that wrong. You can import uh what is it? Manage palettes. That's what they call it, palette. And then you can filter or search install for specific modules. That's what it is, modules. Um, what was the one? I forgot. You can type in and then it looks in the internet and you can install them here. So you can use different nodes which will pop up over here. Do I have some? I think I did. No, I don't know. I think I imported when I tested a little bit. Anyways. You get what I'm talking about, and we'll get there most likely um, another time, because maybe you want to have a specific gouge, you know, some of, some kind of those visual notes. That's something we might have to import. So we want to go, um, first off, you can use the filter, or you scroll down, use the bar on the side. Um, I'll use the filter. Uh, we will use system, I think. That's what I wanted to show you. We have a system, we have a VA bus system control, DC system, VE bus system. Let's just use the system really quick. And you can do a double click. Then you have the system, Venus system, everything which is connected to Raspberry Pi, as much as I understand, and correct me if I'm wrong. So now I can scroll down and uh, let me double check here. We want to go page really quick. We are at a state of 100%. Let's see if we can get this 100% out. Uh, spit out. Spit out. So we have a, what is it, battery temperature, battery state of charge. Let's use this one. Um, let's call it SOC. We can round it already. Um, let's see what what's coming out, just pure of the system. We have to connect this somewhere, so I'll push it to the debug mode. No, sorry. I'll push it into the debug so we can see it on the side. Hit deploy, confirm deploy successfully deployed it's good and it should come yeah every five seconds i believe just per default yeah and that's something which is just enable the information i guess uh, between the victron uh, victron information just to give continuously updates so keep that in mind uh, because when you have a gouge you want to have of course change coming in and you don't want to refresh every 10 minutes or so you want to have it as real time as possible, right? So that's cool. Those are actually the two things I wanted to show you, the inject and also the very specific um, battery. Let's let's change it really quick because I'm not showing you another note, I'm showing you, you can change that. Let's use, uh, what do we have? What do we have? Yeah, let's go back here really quick. Let's use the temperature. I wanna see is the battery and that's the one which is connected to the MultiPlus. Let's see if we get the temperature. So when I change this one to, what was it here? Temperature, battery temperature. So change, you don't have to change the label. You can just, you know, leave it blank. Then use the default. Hit deploy, confirm deploy. I'll clean everything in the debug. And then we see, not. That's not good. Well, that didn't work out. So I have to see which temperature it tries to pull. It looks like it uses maybe a different temperature. But as you see here on the side, there's another temperature sensor and that's pretty cool. So I'll, I'll kick this one out. We use this temperature sensor and then we have two different temperatures. And that's a quite interesting part here because those are actually referring to the Raspberry Pi processor temperature and one wire. I know, that's insane. Well, I'm doing more than I wanted to do and I was anticipating. It's, let's use the 100, which is the first input. We'll use this one. We do not round just to, to see the temperature. Let's go up here to debug. By the way, look at this. This is, this is cool. This looks pretty nice. Nice curves. Hit deploy. Clean the debug output. And maybe something's coming.
There it is. Took a little longer. Seems like it took longer. So the first one, the 43.3, 43.3 is the Raspberry Pi. All right, but hey, I did already more than I wanted to do. We need to do an Able Node Red. That's what we did in this video. That's what I wanted to show you. And I wanted to show you the first two, actually three nodes now. So I hope this helps you. And the next steps will definitely be more going towards this dashboard, how we can build it, how can we use different gouges and stuff like that. And I wanna show you and enable you to use those nodes. That's my goal. If you have specific questions, maybe something I can incorporate then for next time. So post the questions below in the comment section and I'll go through them and see if what I can do for the next uh, video. Subscribe to the channel if you wanna be notified as soon as one of those next videos coming out. And of course, please like the video if you like that stuff. And thanks for watching. Cheers! Thank you.